Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. We know in uh, classical drama, sometimes the weather is used to set the stage. I'm thinking of Shakespeare's uh, Julius Caesar, where we have the, uh, the storm, uh, the storm in King Lear, uh, lightning bolts, things like this. Um, this time around, Copenhagen meets a monstrous collection of tyrants, oppressors, charlatans, opportunists, along with along with um, camp followers, uh, the concentration of limousines, caviar, uh, the various uh, private jets, the Al Gore style hypocrites coming together. But at the same time, the uh, nature of reality being what it is, a huge snowstorm sweeps across the United States as if to provide an ironic commentary to these lunatics meeting in Copenhagen. It's one of the largest uh, blizzards in recent U.S. history, certainly the biggest in 20 years in most places. It was said that if you took off from, uh, from New York City at one point and headed west, you would be flying over the snowstorm for about four hours. You'd be well into, uh, I guess, the Dakotas, uh, and perhaps even into Montana before you uh, got to the other end of the snowstorm. Uh, we had on uh, Wednesday of this week, it looks like uh, the Dakotas, most of those places had high temperatures below zero degrees Fahrenheit. So below zero Fahrenheit, uh, and that's the high, the low, even lower below zero Fahrenheit. That is quite extreme, 19 inches of snow near Madison, Wisconsin. Maybe the faculty of the University of Wisconsin will get some smarts. But, of course, remember, for these characters, empirical evidence doesn't matter. They are true believers, fanatics, lunatics. They have drunk the Malthusian Kool-Aid concocted by Jamaria Ortes, the Venetian kook who invented the basic theses of Malthusianism in Venice, in uh, 1790, you can find an essay by me all over the Internet about that. Look up Ortes, O-R-T-E-S, Venetian kook, uh, carrying capacity. He thought the upper limit for the world was $3 billion. He, of course, absolutely ruled out the consideration of technology, and he felt that uh, economics was a zero-sum game because whatever anybody gained had to be lost by somebody else. So we're basically back to that. Upon this basis, we have Malthus. We have Darwin, we have Nietzsche, we have the entire ideology of the uh, reactionaries of the 19th century, the principal uh, philosophers and thinkers of British imperialism during that time. So we've got a huge storm, uh, and at the uh, proceedings there in Copenhagen, we have this parade of oligarchs, eurogarchs, eurocrats, for example, we have uh, Ivo de Boer, we've been following him, Dutch diplomat, the UN, United Nations climate boss. We've got Herr Runge Metzger, the European Union climate boss. We've got Todd Stern, the U.S. State Department environmental envoy. And we've got Lisa Jackson of the Environmental Protection Agency. Let's not also forget the um, climate czar, Carol Browner, another fanatic lunatic in the uh, Obama White House. And um, what we have, I think, is a dog and pony show. We have a, the, the usual rebellion of the NGOs, in other words, a staged, uh, idiotic performance. Uh, we've got the... AOSIS, the Association of Small and Island States, being led by Tuvalu, and they want money. Uh, and in some degree, the money they want is, is fine. They, they should get some development uh, investments. They should get, above all, productive investment in uh, modern agriculture, modern industry, modern technology. But this, of course, is all wrapped up in this idiocy about carbon. They want to impose the, the, uh, these, these poor... Uh, uh, small and island states, many of which are quite obscure, are demanding uh, more carbon limitation. They're essentially being maneuvered against China and India and the larger third world countries uh, in the name of the of the U.S. So they're demanding more sacrifices from the uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization. In effect, uh, this is a typical. 
typical trick of British imperialism, right? You can remember they have these, they have this whole block of, of small British island colonies that have gone into the organization of American states, and they can be used as a voting block then with relatively low levels of uh, bribery. In other words, it doesn't take much to bribe them. And then we have the flap about the Danish draft, that there's a secret U.S., British, and Danish draft of what's supposed to come out of this, and that is also the target of a uh, big uh, uh, exercise in breastfeeding and hysteria on the part of the Association of Small and Island States. We can only hope that out of all this comes gridlock, the best possible outcome is no outcome. Now, remember, the original game plan called for the U.S. Congress and, indeed, Obama to have enacted into law binding, draconian, suicidal, strangling, suffocating limits on carbon, the cap-and-trade system, the speculative market, the realm of blood and gore. That's a company in London uh, that they could speculate in this, right, doubling or tripling the export price of U.S. wheat, corn, and other basic agricultural commodities, causing hundreds of millions of deaths in Africa, an absolutely genocidal project. Well, that didn't work because of Barkey's uh, ineptitude and bungling. So now we have a Bonapartist action by this charming Lisa, Lisa, the administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency, uh, is telling us that uh, they are going to go ahead and have, indeed, gone ahead to declare Lisa Jackson, the EPA, that they have, they have essentially declared uh, carbon dioxide to be a pollutant, and they now arrogate to themselves the right to regulate that uh, without benefit of any law. This is uh, an ordinance that they're pulling up. And, of course, the Washington Post joins in then to say, when it comes to curbing carbon, EPA intervention should prod the Congress to act, in other words, to go along with this diktat. Now, you can see the tendency is that as Obama's popular consensus erodes, he becomes more and more of a green carbon bonapartist, attempting to float above the society, not really above the society, because the trilateral Wall Street bankers, of course, are the ones telling him to do all this stuff, uh, but uh, basically becoming more and more disconnected from the everyday economic reality of the United States. So again, the goal in this case is very simple. This is not like health care, where there really is an underlying problem. Block it, stop it, gridlock it. Uh, this conference should lead to nothing. Back in a minute.